Hello, I'm So Broken, and this is part two of my What is the Day Before series. If you haven't seen part one, then there is a link in the description, so feel free to watch that first. So, continuing on from part one, we're looking at the Azure Initiative, key cards, vehicles, movement, and weapons. Timestamps are in the description, so you can skip to the chapter if you want. If you want to be part of the community day before Discord, then there is also a link in the description. Come and say hi to me and we'll get the latest news first. Okay, so the Azure Initiative. This one is a bit of a long one, so I'd get comfy. So up front, the Azure Initiative is what the Endgame content will revolve around. In an interview with Gaming Vault, Endgame content was asked about and this is what they had to say. Endgame content is obviously crucial in any game such as this one. What can players expect from the day before in that regard? In terms of things like dungeons, raids and the like. They responded, If you watched our last trailer, then you probably saw a strange corridor. This corridor is part of a large laboratory complex of the mysterious Azure Initiatives Corporation. In general, such PvE places provide an opportunity for us to show the game in a different light. It will be like a cold shower after our boiling hot day. For us, game development is an art where we have no limits to our imagination. This is the strange corridor that they talked about. At the end of the corridor it looks like something nasty has happened. It's also very atmospheric but there are lots of particles in the air. Do you think these are viral spores? Do you think it's ash or do you think it's something else? Also in the picture is the number 15 on the wall. This is probably floor 15. The reason behind this is that at the end of the April IGN footage we see facility 205 being accessed. I would like to say that there won't be over 200 facilities because that seems way too many and they go very deep so with the complexity you know this looks like it's probably going to be floor 15. If we take a listen to the radio transmission from Oliver Frost we could create better versions of ourselves make breakthroughs and change the world if we had realized it then we could have changed many things for the better and this goddamn Azure initiatives wouldn't have existed. Oh, it would have been nice to come back, change everything. Clearly, the Azure initiative is the cause of the new world, as he puts it. Clearly, the Azure initiative are very established in the world and must have been around for a long time. They have underground facilities like we've seen, but they also have a skyscraper in the middle of New York called the Ocean Business Center. This is not something cheap or quick to build, so they must have been around for a long time. I guess the question is, how do we access these facilities? Well, first of all, you have to find a keycard. In the April IGN footage, we see a keycard found in the cash register in the petrol station. Well, gas station if you're in the US. It says 205 on it, so it looks like it opens the 205 bunker, meaning there are no generic cards if you find a card, you will have to find the bunker that it opens. We can also see that the other player can't open the door because he doesn't have the keycard. Now, personally, I think that the video had the card in the cash register to make it a better story, a bit shorter. But in the real world, I think they're going to be much harder to find or even be quest items. How do you think that we will find them and how rare do you think they will be? Also recently we got a look at an Azure Initiatives logo. Now this is probably just for the Twitter for people to have a go at a little bit of a maze but the logo really really reminded me of the Dharma Initiative. If any of you have watched Lost then you'll know what I mean. But here is a comparison for you. So on the left you can see the Azure Initiative logo and on the right is the Dharma Initiative. And this was a, an underground sort of company pharmaceutical company maybe they they did lots of weird things anyway and they were a bit dodgy a bit like what i think the azure initiative is actually going to be like okay so next up are vehicles in the gaming ball interview they asked the question it seems like vehicles and vehicular exploration are going to be an important part of the experience can you tell us more about this will building repairing and maintaining vehicles be important mechanics in the game they replied travel off road need the mud but be careful if you get stuck, you will become an easy prey. The car can either save your life or become a trap. You need to keep an eye on the fuel, otherwise you can stall at the most inconvenient moment. We have carefully approached the details of the game. For example, in order to fill up the fuel, you need to pick up a canister and really pour it into the tank of the car. 
The same way the car is repaired, you have to go out and fix it. The game will include not only ordinary cars, but also armoured vehicles. Just imagine, we are walking together along the lifeless streets of the city and skyscrapers once filled with people hang over us. We have the best assault rifles and then we suddenly see a running armoured vehicle ahead that notices us. To deal with such an enemy, you need a completely different approach. Now I do want to touch on what this other approach might be but we need to get to the weapons sections for that so stick around to the end of the video for that one. However, we're going to talk about the actual vehicles that are going to be in the game, that we've seen so far anyway. So far, we have seen drivable 4x4 off-road Jeep-like vehicles in the April IGN trailer, followed by a utility truck through the thick mud. The physics and mud deformation look really good here. Later on in the video, we also see a drivable police car, not one that you would find in the inner city though, and of course, it's been followed by an armoured truck too. But here's a better look at the armor truck because that screenshot's a bit blurry. Yeah, I can see myself having a lot of fun with this, but how do you think that they will balance it? I haven't been able to find any more vehicles in any of the footage that's been released so far, but if you found any, please let me know because I'd love to get some coverage on it. Okay, so on to movement, and then finally weapons for this video at least. So movement, it seems to have a fairly standard approach for a third person shooter. Walking, running, crouching, they have all been seen, but I haven't seen anyone go prone and it looks like there isn't a cover system like you would find in most third person games. So taking cover is crouching behind an object. Third person camera is still usable though and you can camera glitch like in PUBG or The Division. Vaulting has been seen, so it's good news if you want to push a player who's reloading, there's no need to run around the cover. Climbing probably isn't a thing. From what we have seen so far, I would love to see climbing, but I don't think it's in there. You know, just imagine climbing up to ledges. It would give them so much more freedom to add areas that you can explore that would normally be hidden. What types of movement would you like to see in the game, though? I'd be quite curious to see what people want and what we actually get. The last thing for the video, as this is getting along, are weapons. So, I will do a full video on the weapons when we get more footage, but we have seen the following weapons so far in clips and images. There's an AK type weapon, an AR-15 type weapon, pistol, grenade, shotgun, an MP5 SMG, and hunting rifle. Melee weapons have also been confirmed in an interview with Every Eye. They said, Still talking about the tools of death, we have been assured of the presence of melee weapons that can be used both to avoid the waste of bullets and to surprise the enemies by exploiting the stealth component of the game. The artificial intelligence according to the team's words will have a rather developed hearing and adopt a stealth approach. It will take great caution both in moving and in the most trivial actions such as opening a door, which we talked about in the first video's audio section. Weapon customization hasn't been confirmed or denied, but here is a rifle with a compensator on it. And all of the other weapons that we've seen so far don't have anything on the muzzle. So whether this is just an artistic piece or not, that's something that we'll find out when we get more information. But weapon customization is probably going to be part of the game. Really briefly, because they said that you have to deal with the armored vehicles in a different way, I would also presume they're going to get some sort of high explosive, whether this is going to be a C4 charge, whether this is going to be something like a rocket launcher system or a grenade launcher we don't know we do have grenades though we have seen grenades being used so explosives are in the game we just don't know to what degree let me know how you would handle the apc though that would be great to know and that about wraps this video up the next video is about the alarm systems and there's a lot to cover on them so either follow me on social media or subscribe and turn the notifications on to get notified as soon as it comes out there are lots more things to cover plus each bit of news that comes out i will be covering if you want to join the community discord then links are in the description so feel free to say hi. I've been so broken. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.